probably one of the main obstacles for people that want to make a transition into the boondocking style camping is power. And that's what I hear most often from people. Well, we need to be plugged in, otherwise we just can't camp. So let's begin to talk about power because it is important and how do we create that power when we're out here in the middle of nowhere. We share useful tips on more subjects like heat, water, food, and more in a full-length video elsewhere on our channel. Also, there's probably been an info card pop up above me that you can click on. Now, the easiest, most convenient way to generate power when you're out boondocking is to use a generator, obviously. In our case, we carry two of them. We have one that's on board built into our motorhome, and then we carry another portable one uh, behind the motorhome that's smaller and quieter. You might be able to see the portable one in this shot. I'm not sure. The larger generator is less efficient and uses more fuel, and for almost every task required, it's overkill. Much like the onboard furnace in our unit, which we will discuss in our boondocking tips for heating video. As a result, we only use the larger onboard generator for specific uses like air conditioning. We use this large generator on average about one to three times per season now, because all other generator use is with the smaller Honda 2000. It is much more quiet and fuel efficient, yet delivers more than enough power to handle the tasks we give it. Now we will use these generators when necessary, but we've sort of moved beyond this because while it's easy and convenient to generate power this way, we find the noise of these machines don't really mix with our idea of serenity in interacting with nature. Also, we didn't want to be overly reliant on perpetually having a large fuel supply to refill these generators because oftentimes we're boondocking a fair distance from any sort of uh, civilization that could refill services like this. And so we began to explore ways to boondock while minimizing our generator use. So we're in a scenario now where we endeavor to run our generators as little as possible. I think right now in an average month, we'll run the generators around two hours in a month or so. In simple terms, we just began irritating ourselves with the sound of our power blocks. And also we can imagine that when we have neighbors that can hear them, we would also be irritating to them. And we didn't want to be that noisy neighbor for let's say someone that's coming out for three or four days and wants to enjoy the sounds of nature around them. The alternative method that we explored to bring in power and energy to our unit was the use of solar panels and in conjunction inverters and batteries. For most of the products that we mention in this video, we'll provide links in the description below so that you can find them easily when shopping for them. While these affiliate links do help out the channel monetarily in a small way, the good news is, is that if you use them, it doesn't increase your purchase price at all. We found immediately once we added two 100 watt solar panels that our reliance on our generators dropped drastically. So before solar panels, we would have to run our generators four or five hours a day every second day. Now with the solar panels, the required amount that we use our generators, like I mentioned before, is about two hours a month. Immediately after adding solar panels, we notice significant benefits in the form of drastically reduced noise pollution because we no longer have to run the power blocks or generators almost ever. And we still have very good flexibility from the energy that the solar panels create. So we can still keep our battery systems charged to run all of our small onboard appliances like our fridge, what have you, lights, etc. But we can also do things like charge these laptops or this phone, microphone, whatever, use small appliances off of our inverter. So it gives, gives us quite a range of flexibility for our power requirements and it doesn't require us to run our generators anymore. So for us that was a huge advantage so that we can actually hear the nature when we're out camping. The solar panel setup is still quite new to us. We're in our second season of doing it and so you can see that our mounting system is temporary and uh, kind of basic. We're also considering transitioning to a more foldable style uh, lightweight solar panel setup and so we'll be looking at doing that going forward as well. We're also going to be looking to upgrade our onboard batteries from the lead acid style to a better technology. Right now we're leaning towards lithium batteries 
If any of you have opinions or experiences or ideas in the area of onboard battery storage systems, please add to the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Once you've made some simple changes as far as portable power goes, you'll be well on your way to boondocking longer. And the next thing you'd want to turn your attention to is your, probably your next biggest basic need, and that is drinkable water.